Hello. Uh, I apologize for my hair. I was in the shower. I wasn't planning to do another uh, effect tutorial, uh, you know, one after the other. But my friend that I edited for, Tio, uh, uploaded a video recently, and this shot here got a lot of uh, attention. God, man. That was awesome. I wish I could do that. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so a lot of people seem to think that that effect looked uh, very realistic. But good news for you, it's very simple to do, and all you need is After Effects. $45 Canadian a month. <laughs> We're just gonna jump right in. So this is the uh, composition itself. And as you can see, it's just a small video here, the small webcam, and there's Tio bouncing the ball, and it goes behind the chair. A lot of the reason why this looks so good uh, is because it's so far away. As you can see from this, like from how far this is, it looks amazing, but the more you zoom on it, the less real it looks. Like it goes in front of his fingers and everything. Come on! But yeah, let's, uh, let's just recreate this. So the way that Tio uh, records his uh, videos is that he streams on a PC and then he records on the other, and the way he records is a bit like this, where on this right here, you can see my the gameplay or, you know, the, the screen, and then here's my webcam. So I've got the webcam isolated, and that's why you can only see the webcam right now, because I brought in After Effects. And enough about how this all works, let's just, let's just animate the ball. Now we've got a ball JPEG. Um, there's a white background, but we don't want that. So I'm just gonna take a uh, ellipse ellipse tool and I'm gonna click from the middle and hold shift and that'll keep it a perfect circle but as you can see here no worky and no worky so we're gonna hold control boom and it's gonna expand from the center and then we're just gonna remove all the white you can go to the layer here press F and then put like maybe two pixels of feather just so it's not too harsh on the edges we're gonna scale the ball down to where it looks semi realistic here Say this looks fine. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna animate the ball in a way that makes sense. Animation is complicated, and here you just wanna go with the feel of how you think objects move for real. So we're gonna press P, we're gonna enable the position. So we're just gonna start, and we got keyframes as you can see here, and now we're gonna go ahead in time where he pushes the ball down. And uh, while when people push things, they go fast. So we're gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it follow his hands until he gives that last push, and then you just can see there's like a, like a, you know? So when the arms are fully extended here, I'm gonna make it go all the way to the ground. And as you can see here, the problem is, is that the ball's in front of everything, and the chair. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna take a break from this animation, and um, I'm gonna put the stuff that's supposed to be in front in front. So I'm gonna duplicate the footage. So we can just call this one footage, and we're gonna call this one stuff in front. And that we're just going to go ahead and mask anything that should be in the way. So the the mic arm the and the chair. So we're just going to go and do that. See you in uh, 10 years. And for the rest here, we're going to take care of that after. So, for, so it doesn't go, come out the uh, the edges of the, the frame. So, so far, this looks, you know, pretty natural. But we want it to bounce back in his hands by the time he recoils his hands back so he's catching the ball so we're just gonna make the ball go back up as he's pushing his hands back and again once he extends his arms fully we'll let it go to the ground a few frames later boom he throws it to the ground like that so let's see how it looks like so as you can see, you got the base of the animation, like you, you've got the principle, so you you know, you know, make him throw it when his arms are extended and catch it when his arms are up, boom, and then bounce back up to his hands, make it track the hands, like that. He throws it. So now that you kind of get how to do the animation, um, we're just gonna recap. The less time goes by and the more movement you give, the faster the ball will go. So if I go a few frames in the future and I put the ball all the way there, it's gonna go real fast. But if I put the, the keyframe later, you see, it. so with that principle in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this animation, then I'll see you in three seconds. I don't know how that looked. That might have looked really dumb. Pa time has now passed and I've done all of this. Boom, 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 boom. And that this is the last bounce here. So we're going to do, I'm going to make it bounce to the floor. And then it's going to bounce again behind the chair. And then here, there's like a ball. Not this one, this one here, the tiny one. And you can stretch it to make it have like an arc. And now let's see how that looks. So now 
as you can see wait it's not going behind the chair what yes as you can see the chair as like a kind of a fiber that you can see through so for this one i just went to the stuff in front and turned the opacity to like uh 90 i think let's set a keyframe here then i'll go a, a one keyframe down and make it like 90. And then it goes behind the chair. The thing is that it goes behind the mic too, so. You can always just make a layer for the mic itself. And um, I can just go and do this here. Now the ball's behind the mic as well. And there it goes. Now it passes behind the, uh, the chair. I don't know why it does like a weird... <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so now this is what it looks like. Now a few things look off about this. First of all, we we're missing motion blur. What is motion blur? If, I, if I'm throwing this around... <laughs> there's... <laughs> it landed behind my desk. Shit becomes blurry when it moves fast, as most of you might know. What's cool about After Effects is that you can press this knee button here, boom, and then you go to the you click here the toggle switches mode and when you see the same button there you enable that boom and now look at that when it's fast it has motion blur it's not the best motion blur uh, out there this is just like the default motion blur but it looks uh, good enough for this so let's see it with the motion blur already looks way more realistic also the color does not match the footage at all so we're gonna go uh with the, on the dodgeball and add a, a curves effect and you can just mess with the colors until uh, you're satisfied with how it looks. So I want it to be a bit darker here, but uh, it's still too uh, saturated compared to teal. So I'm going to go on the, and add a hue and saturation. And we're just going to take down the saturation from this. There we go. So it's a bit more washed out like teal. No, it's not like in a roast way. But there we go. Getting there. Um, I think this is good. And now the final touch is to make sure it stays in that... Um, the, the frame. So what my instincts tell me to do is just like, oh, I mean, obviously, just uh, just go on the layer and do a square and then boom, you're good to go. But then like, you're like, what is going on here? And even if you make the mask subtract, it subtracts the whole thing. Maybe you invert it. Does that work? It doesn't even work because the mask moves with the layer here and it just cuts the bottom off. So what uh, I do is um, I go to the dodgeball and we're going to pre-compose it and we're going to move attributes into composition, call it ball, boom. Now it's a pre-comp. So now what does that mean? It's basically like a nested sequence in Premiere. It's basically as if, it's like as if I took my, my ball and I put it in a bag and now I'm affecting the bag as a whole and everything that's inside it. <laughs> so now that we've got the ball bag, ooh, that sounds like a ball sack. Let's call it ball receptacle. Is that even a word? Now that we have our ball uh, container, we can apply the mask without worry. So we can just go do a mask around here and this should look epic. There we go, you've got. And last little detail here is that you can also uh, for extra detail as you can see the ball goes in front of the fingers and if you're like super like perfectionist You can always just du duplicate the footage put it in front of the ball um, And then just call it fingies add some fingers in there Like that as you can see now there's fingers a bit rough So we're gonna press F add some feather maybe like two and uh, We can just go to the mask uh, press M mask path and we can uh, Whoops, and uh, animate the mask for a few frames like this. And obviously, obviously you can like click away and like change the actual shape of the mask here. But it doesn't have to be super perfect as it's pretty far. Whoops, and then once you're done with it, you can just control shift D. Whoops, <laughs> control shift D. And then you can delete the other part and now it looks like oh yeah make sure you trim the beginning as well and now it looks like he's actually like holding the ball uh i didn't do that but you can and add more detail to the video so i hope you uh, you enjoy this uh i will be uploading another gaming video uh, next week sometime uh, i've got a few videos planned if you enjoy this please subscribe uh, i stream on twitch 
Why am I doing numbers? <laughs> I also stream on Twitch. Link is somewhere. Uh, uh, we have some fun times. Here's a funny clip. Me, uh, Elden Ring 12 and then the Scavenger Hunt 3. Yeah, five, are you sorry. making an Elden Ring? We were waiting with it. It's fun. What? You making an Elden Ring video? We heard uh, that. We yeah, all no. heard that, bro. <laughs> Is that a fart? I also got a Discord. I'm just gonna plug everything. I got a Discord right here. I've got a VOD channel right there. If you miss VODs from my stream, you can go watch them there. My God. Twitter? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.